As consumers, how did you react when you found out about the ADA in bread and how would that affect your consumer behaviour in future? Well, that actually upset me a hanger a lot because I love the honey and uh, oats for toast. You know, the oats and honey, Sasko oats and honey. And uh, to think that we've been eating this at our age, I'm 75, my husband's 81, and I've also, any bread that's left over, I give to the Bachis. And to think that I'm giving people that can hardly buy meats, can hardly buy anything, they are eating this bread, which is bad for the chest, bad for children, they get asthma, and it's also cancer for me, Michael. Cancer for me. And also cancer for me. And being that my husband is a homeopath, and I've always watched the food and watched everything, I was actually very, very upset. I took the flour and I threw it into the dustbin, but I wouldn't put it just in the bag. I threw it all over so nobody could take that flour. And to think that up to yesterday, everybody has still got the Sasko bread on the shelf and the, and the, and the flour. And how many days? Well, I mean, the 27th of April till now, mm. they are not taking anything off there. They're not worried about uh, people going to bed with this poison in their tummies. Um, I don't think that money should come into this. Uh, I think that one should honestly and earnestly think of the people of South Africa. And I think that the government should actually do something about additives to any food in this country. I really do. You want to know what you eat? I want to know what I eat. And I do read the tin labels. I don't buy tin food, by the way. But I do re read labels wherever I go. <laughs> and yeah. nowhere on the bread do they tell you all the harmful things that are on there. So I was actually very, very upset about the whole thing. Would you buy those products again? Never. Never. I don't, never, I don't never, trust never. them. Never, ever, ever. Because before that, they put an ad A in there, what did they have, Michael? Yeah, they had um, bromelated products. Say that again? Bromelated. What is that? Which is, uh, it's bromine. Mm -hmm. It's for bleaching the flour. Okay. And uh, this is uh, equally as harmful as it was... Uh, ADA. ADA. So they still did something else. Now, I don't know what they want to form now, but I feel that bread that lasts and lasts and lasts is not good. Anything that's good will go off quickly because it is full of energy and full of the goodness of food. So I think that that's very, very important that people must see. Many of these um, companies now said that they will withdraw it by the end of May. Um, uh, uh, did Pick and Pay say they're taking it off today? They are taking it off by the end of May. Pick and Pay has already taken it off. Pick and Pay has already taken, taken it off. off. Woolworths, Checkers, end of June, July. Yes, yes. But the, the rest is all set the end of May. Would you, I mean, I, I buy it again? Do I you should, trust that? No, I don't. No. no, I don't. I don't trust that at all. And I feel that the government should stay in because, look, let's face it, the bread and the mealy meal, that is the stable diet of South Africa, isn't it? Yes. Everybody has bread in their house, and especially the poor, that's all they can live on. And when I go out and I want to give something to someone that is starving, I go in and get bread. And I've been buying Sasko, but never again will I buy Sasko, because they took off the last lot and they've gone on to ADA. So I think that's very bad. Now you said to me earlier that you think South African consumers are complacent? Very complacent. They're very complacent. In fact, some of the people, when I went into Pick and Pay, being Gary, mm -hmm. and Pick and Pay, um, uh, Kate Gate, mm -hmm. and I was speaking to the manager and the other people were, uh, you know, in the office there, you could see that they were absolutely um, laughing at me, literally. They think it's funny. I want to tell you something as well. I was very upset with, um, what is that? Uh, uh, Cape Talk. Early in the morning, I got through, and uh, the gentleman, I told him what uh, I was upset about, and he said, I don't know what you're talking about, just say it again, and I said it again, and I was, try, I was still, still talking to him mm. about this uh, product, mm. and I was just telling him about the Sunday Times and what the report they were saying, and he cut me off. 
my friend phones and he says he does not like alarmists and cut her off. I'm not an alarmist at all. Mm. Um, I'm, a, I'm a person that just loves people. I love children. I love life, as you can see. I'm 75. I've, I've still got a lot of energy in me. And uh, I was prepared to march if anybody would march with me. But nobody wants to do anything. <laughs> they, they laughed at me, dear Gary and this Kate Kate. When I said, come on, you must all stand up and, and do something about this. Because if everybody stops eating Sasko and they take it off the shelf and everybody in the country does that, they have to change. May I they have, have a word to change. Here? May I have a word? Yes. You know, every producer produces only with one purpose in mind, and that is to sell their products. Now, if people gang up and they say, forget it, we're not buying this rubbish anymore, that producer will damn soon change his attitude and his product. Yeah. It's yeah. as simple as no, that. They, no, they will. They will. The people that you approached in the shops, um, did they actually uh, know what you were talking uh, about? I stood by the bread place I bought Alvin the other day, and another lady was standing there, and I said to her, don't buy Sasco. Don't buy that bread. And she says, why? And when I started telling her about the Sunday Times and mm. what, what was happening, and I had a photo that copy like this, and I said to her, this is what I'm talking about. She put the bread down, she thanked me very, very much, and she went to Albany. Okay. And if Albany and Blue Bread and all these other breads can not have all these additives in, why can't Sasko? I think Sasko does it because they want their bread to last a long time on the shelf. I don't know. I don't really know what it's all about. But I think that that is uh, uh, very bad. But I was very upset with uh, uh, Cape Talk, mm. and uh, I feel that people in the media should listen to the consumer. As, 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 as uh, uh, Megan Power says, I hope the consumer is going to take this up and do something. And I've got another friend that I said to her, phone Cape Talk, and she phoned Cape Talk, and she said, he told me I'm an alarmist and put the phone down. A lot of people that I spoke to said to me um, that... They saw it as a, a storm in a teacup because they use such small amounts of this chemical. What do you think about that? No, What's no, your no, take on that? Yeah, 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 we go. Let let okay, me tell talk me talk about it. small amounts. Okay. I'm a retired homeopath. You make your own medicine. And I know that um, small is just as dangerous as big. Now, <clears throat> homeopathy works with very, very small amounts. And um, whether it be the, uh, the, the electrical emissions from, from the, the uh, uh, microphone, uh, microphone mumps, uh, <coughs> or the amalgam in teeth, it is small toxins that do the damage. And quite frankly, the only safe level for any toxin is no level. Yeah. In the story. Yeah. Now, uh, and I mean, a homeopath, uh, that's just why people don't believe in homeopathy, because they say, how can the hundredth or whatever, how, uh, how, how do you get to the... The 30th, 30th centesimal dilution, which is the one followed by 60 noughts. They say it can't work. And yet it still works. I brought up five children on homeopathy, and uh, I did have an ordinary GP doctor, and when my husband had to go for a medical because he uh, had to take some insurance out, he said he can't believe that all five children, my husband and myself, have never come to him because we never get coughs and colds. In 18 years. In 18 years, and I said it's because of homeopathy and, and natural, natural, mm. natural therapy. That much for small amounts. That's small amount. It's very small amount, and this is why people don't, uh, uh, they say homeopathy doesn't work. It does work. It's very, very strong. But I'll tell you what is uh, hindering homeopathy today, and we're going to go on to, uh, what's it, uh, Michael, what you do? What medicine are you going to do now? Oh, yeah. Acupressure and yes, yes. vibrational. Vibrational. Uh, because of all the uh, masks and cell phones, 
All these things are disturbing people tremendously, tremendously. And I can tell you, I don't have a cell phone, I don't want a cell phone, I don't need a cell phone. I've got, a, I've got my daughter who has got to have a cell phone. So when we're in the car, we normally are in the car with her, and she never uses a cell phone in the car, but let's say we've got shops or something, somebody needs us urgently. I do see the, the good in it. But my husband and I have never had a cell phone, and we've always done business. I worked for APSA, in APSA days, when I worked for APSA there was no cell phone. And if I can use it, go in life without a cell phone, so can most people. And I don't think children should have cell phones. I really don't.